straight to digital, no theatrical. The range is kind of zero, you know, almost zero to. How much does a film's budget impact what it'll sell for? Let's say someone makes a film for half a million. Is a distributor likely to make an offer of half a million? No. Um, in fact, they don't care what the budget is. They may care from the point of view of interest, like oh, how you know if, if they're um, know anything about production, and they think oh, wow, you really this literally looks great. What did you spend from that perspective? But distributors in general, they want to all they care about is what it's worth on the market. And they're going to look at your film and compare it to other films in their catalog or in their imagination or wherever they, however they make their subjective evaluation of your film and decide, okay, we think once it goes out into the world, it'll make, um, a mil we think it'll make a million dollars. Then they might be advancing and they, they really have to think it, it's going to make a million dollars in order to advance half a million dollars um, because there's still going to be costs for them to Especially if there's if there's if they're if they're buying something for half a million dollars, uh, they're probably you know spending a couple million dollars to monetize that thing. They can't just you buy something for half a million dollars, you can't just put it on the um, on transactional VOD and hope to sell it later. Um, films don't make that much money when when you do that. Um, so it's it's all about what what do, how much revenue do we feel like this can make for us, or how many viewers do we feel like, or how many subscribers are we going to gain because of this this title? That's the way you know Netflix and Hulu and people like that look at it. Because um, at the end of the day, um, I've seen half million dollars films that look like they were made for two dollars, and I've seen half million dollars films that look like they were made for seven million dollars, and so that goes to the talent of the production company and the filmmaker and the ability to you know, get value from what they spent. Why do we hear that it's bad for filmmakers to be transparent about their budget? So with regard to being transparent to a distributor, um, I think that you know, if it's, because it could, could go badly two different ways. If I tell a, a distributor I made it for half a million dollars, their opinion would be like, wow, that was ridiculous. Like, why did you spend so much money? Um, and that make them make them afraid of making an offer because if you're expecting to make that much money back, they may not feel like you. Even though, even though they're maybe the best option for you, they may feel conservatively that they're not going to make that much money for you. Um, you know, on the flip side, um, if they're if they're wowed by it, it doesn't. I don't think it really makes much difference from them unless they're the kind of company that um, is in the business of making films themselves and are looking at you as a potential filmmaker to invest in in the future. And there are very few distributors that actually, most distributors um, don't do that. Most distributors are just distributors and so they don't really, you know, the budget just doesn't really matter to them. But it might matter to some, some distributors that um, that um, actually make movies. Well, it's interesting because it seems like with Hollywood, we know their budget and it's, it's out there in the trades, whereas with independent filmmakers, we're almost supposed to hide ours like in a shameful way. Yeah. Um, I, I usually just take the, uh, I take the position of not being, hiding it for shame. I just like, why does it make any difference? Right? Like, um, unless you made it for ten thousand dollars and it looks like half a million, and you want to brag about it and make that kind of part of your your pitch that look how great we are, we could make something short. But not, I don't find most Hollywood cares about that. Or, and I think that story's been played, right? We had Robert Rodriguez and a couple of others that have like, wow, this film was made for nothing. Um, and now people, tons of people make films for nothing. Every day someone made a film for almost nothing. So it's no longer really a badge of honor. Um, it's just another fact. Um, and not a very sexy one. One way or the other, I don't think. So I tend to tell people, let's just not, they're not going to ask us. So let's not put it out there. Is the way I, the way I see it. 
I think it's irrelevant. Like, look at the quality of the film. If you want it, pay the right price for it. But why is it different for Hollywood? Why, why are we okay knowing that, you know, this many million was spent on this film? Well, there again, I'm not depending on the Hollywood film because there's different, there's studio level and then there's things that are kind of made with international sales agents that pop up to studio level. And so there's different kinds of studio films. Um, I'm not sure we're getting the accurate budget from, from these people, even though they're public um, sometimes. So um, I think there's also, there's been a number of times when, you know, the number got out that a production spent and it was so much that it had a negative impact on people viewing the film. Um, probably would have failed anyway, but there's a few out there that spent 200 million and, be, you know, people are like, wow, that, that they shouldn't have done that. <laughs> right. So, um, Ishtar. Yeah, Ishtar, Johnny Depp, Native American film, played Tonto. Oh, uh, Lone Ranger. You know, there there are a few examples out there of how it negatively impacted the the publicity. So, um, I think some of the some of the numbers you see about Hollywood um, production stuff out there is guessing, really guesswork and some insight, getting some inside information, but that they're not necessarily publishing every budget for everybody to see. I don't think that's that's really happening. Can you give us the ranges of how much movies make on various platforms? Well, I can tell you from kind of a true indie perspective, right? Because um, what I work on are mostly true indie films not made in Hollywood, not made with international sales agents, not made with Kevin Bacon in it. You know, the, those are the films I mostly work on. Um, and I see um, the range of revenue coming off of transactional VOD, um, which is rental and buying on iTunes and Amazon and the various cable TV platforms, um, straight to digital, no theatrical. The range is kind of zero, you know, almost zero to 150,000, about in that range with the median being much closer to zero and the outliers at the 150 range. So it's not like the average is 75. The average is, the median, the median is more like um, 20,000, I'd say, 30,000 for most, most films. And sorry to interrupt, this is for the life of the term of the contract? Correct. Okay. And most of that revenue coming in within the first two years and then just dropping. Um, the next window they go to then, of course, is SVOD or TV sales and the range there is not making that deal. So there's zero coming in off of that window to a couple hundred thousand dollars with most films not getting that deal. That's probably the, the most likely case to some films getting 40 to 20 to 60 in that range. And then AVOD is a growing, fa uh, sorry, advertising video on demand, which is Tubi and Pluto, where they're paying royalty. People are watching um, because uh, and w watching advertisement rather than subscribing or paying for it. Um, those platforms are paying ten to fifteen cents per view, and the revenues on there are um, again kind of zero to. 150,000 in that range as well. And growing because it's a, it's a growing um, part of the business because a lot of people don't want to pay. There's a lot of people who don't have money to subscribe to 10 platforms, um, let alone one, and don't want to rent movies, but watch a lot of stuff in that, in that, um, in that ecosystem now. So it's a growing, growing place for films to make money. And you can't skip those ads, correct? They're not skipping. That's right. That's right. And they come up in weird, awful places right. as well. It's not the best viewing experience. And you said 15 cents per, is it per view? Uh, it's per view What if they if they watch a decent amount of the film. I think it's if they watch most of the movie, then the royalty paid out is can be 15 cents per view, um, which is a lot better than what Amazon Prime went down to, which is one cent per view. Um, so that's been a, but we don't know where that's going to go because there are more, there are many more AVOD platforms out there. Lots of distributors are creating their own AVOD platforms 
advertising video on demand platforms. Um, and, um, and uh, you know, it just depends. The Tubi was bought by Fox. Um, and the way these things go, you just never know what they're going to do with the platform. Do they keep it being a place where distributors can put all their stuff? Or do they eventually turn into something else? Like Netflix at one point was the place where you watched all the movies you ever could, right? Like it had every movie. Now you go to watch Netflix content on Netflix, um, mostly. So, so we'll see. And is that per, per view, per like IP address? If, if the same user is watching things over and over again, it can still generate money? For the yeah, I'm not sure about that. I, I'm, I imagine that the system probably has safeguards against people creating algorithms so that they just can just like play a film over and over again and make it money, right? I'm sure that they have safeguards against that, but uh, I don't know for sure.